those of you who don't know, we were working with the EPA on, and we got permission from the city council at a work session a few months ago to uh, take the plan, confer with uh, confer with stakeholders, including uh, government agencies, and get their in. We got their input, and that's what resulted in some revisions of the plan. The, the purpose of those revisions is it's not to take away from the themes because you know the themes are connectivity, heritage, driving neighborhoods, driving commercial. You know. So we're not taking away from the themes. What we did was just clarify the, uh, the strategies so they're definitely actionable, you know? Um, but with that said, we're still interested in hearing from all of you, all residents in all three neighborhoods to make sure that these strategies reflect your wishes as well, right? Yeah. So, and Bart uh, helped revise the map exhibits too uh, and, and insert those so you can also find these in the plan. And we also brought copies. In case you'd like to have a hard copy, you're welcome to take one. You can look at it now or later. Or take, we got 10 copies here. So, right. Does anyone want to have one in their hand right now? And, and, the, and the PDF of this plan, PDF is available on the internet too. So if, you're, if you prefer to look at PDFs, the same things on the internet. I'm going to interrupt you a couple sure. times to supplement. Uh, one of the critical elements about this plan is, uh, or this, the purpose of this outreach, is getting you to take the survey after you've read the plan. We have physical surveys, or you can just go online, SurveyMonkey style, and fill it out there. So if you don't fill out the survey, then we basically fail. <laughs> right. Thank you, for So you have to reiterate that. Um, to kind of tie it all together. After we do our inter, inter, uh, meetings with the neighborhoods and after we get comments and surveys, comments, then we'll incorporate all that feedback to revise the plan once more. That way it reflects precisely what the neighborhoods want. Then we give that to the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Planning and Zoning Commission will make a recommendation to City Council to adopt the plan. To formulate out the plan. And that's where we want to go. Because if we get the city council to adopt the plan, that gives it a lot more weight when it comes to paying for projects, especially capital projects, you know, public projects. Whenever Lexi may have has, has informed you know the folks in the begin work group, has educated the folks in the begin work group that our city we have a capital improvement program. And so to really see some physical improvements in the built environment. You gotta advocate for those projects and they're prioritized. But when you get a plan that's adopted, that gives it a lot more weight. So that way the uh, it gets higher up there in the capital improvement plan. So that's the real purpose of all that. And also um, when you're applying for grants, nine times out of 10, there's a question on the grant that says, does this appear in an existing plan? So we want to answer yes to that whenever we're at uh, CDBG and you know anything grant related, whether it's CDBG or other grants that you find. Sure. So that's going to be that's going to be the big difference from where we were, you know, before in the years working with the EPA on revitalization. You know, it's just going through and, and developing the plan. But once we get this adopted, that's going to go a long way towards getting the funding and getting these things done in the community. Any questions so far? Okay, and then this is the survey, again, that Bart constructed. And if you prefer, you know, if you know like SurveyMonkey on the internet, which is really handy, so it's the same survey. If, you, if you're comfortable with doing the survey on the internet, great. The link to that survey is on pueblo.us forward slash CSRP. Hear that folks? In the well, 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 that US CSRP stands for Colorado Smelt Revitalization Plan, CSRP. Uh, but it, it, you're all welcome, anyone of you are welcome to take the uh, hard copy survey. Take, you know, and, and, and I would suggest, do you think it'd be more effective if they took it home now or, or filled it out here at the meeting? Part? I would highly recommend doing it online because that just saves your taxpayer dollars in me and Alan Tallett. I looked at it, I didn't fill it out because I missed it. Yeah, we did. What yeah. keeps people from hey. filling out more than one online and so forth? 
usually there is a um you register um yeah uh, ip or email address i believe like it recognizes your, your computer has like an address so it's like oh yeah you already sort of you already filled out the survey yeah. so you're good yeah but um this is uh, let me give a copy of this to the, the secretary and then if anyone of you are welcome to uh the city planning department actually we have a folder we're going to leave here yeah. to start yeah and at the end of the process we'll right. the folders. so yeah so jeff if you don't mind see this little folder says completed surveys yes just have people just come here and just well, yeah you can do it right here sure yeah so you we'll leave copies with you do you only have 10 surveys for now but we can always make more okay, okay. And, and so, we're, we're right, so, so what do you think the odds are of people actually having curiosity and coming here and looking at this in the future? Word of mouth could spread Word quickly. Mouth. So tied to that question is because there are certainly people that don't go on the internet. Mm -hmm. They don't read the news. So is there some sort of door yeah. bag that we can, you know, need? Oh yeah. Lexi can talk about that. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah, so what I'm also trying to do, and if anybody wants to volunteer, what I'm doing is for every, you know, I think it's five or 10 hours of volunteer time, I'm giving $25 Visa gift cards for helping. But we have um, bags that we intend on using and just instead of door hangers, putting them there. And so the information from the, the survey can go in there, um, the slip if they wanted to log on online, and then a couple of other resources too, like um, the food pantry information, and we'll be hanging those just on random doors throughout the neighborhoods, hopefully in the next coming weeks. I want to acknowledge the health department for being a partner on this because Lexi and, and our public health department, public department of health and environment, have been great partner on this because they're, they've offered to pay for the cost of outreach. You know, the postcards, the flyers, uh, public notice, and then and this, you know, the actual direct engagement of hanging, you know, going out to the neighborhoods and putting them on doors. So it's it's tremendous and that's yeah. that goes a long way. <laughs> the health department with the BPN community has really been a great assistance to us. Yes. To everybody actually. Yeah. And that's and that's that's I'm really proud of that because the begin work group, which spun off from the health department grant about almost three years ago. That's really done, I think, great things and getting outreach to the community. It's it's it served as a great model for for outreach and getting, you know, I, I think if we we hoped originally that that we could scale that to other neighborhoods in the future, that type of activity. So, yeah. so uh, there's a couple of things on that chart I probably think we should point out sure. as they're specifically related to you guys in the group. So, okay, I will step up for a second. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to go to see this this chart right here kind of re represents the thanks the, the, the meat potatoes of the plan what the uh, what the actual actionable items are yeah. um, some of them been modified from the original plan but I just want to take an opportunity to discuss them with you guys directly um, the original plan had a are you guys familiar with a gateway treatment is um, the the recommendation of the plan was a southern gateway to the river wall but um we had a little bit of discussion about that in the planning department and the problem that we saw with that is if you put a, a bow john town gateway in the southern gateway to the river walk where's the gateway to the grove do you just drive by the grove so it, instead of doing that i think it would be better to see a gateway to the river walk gateway to the grove so one on each side of the first side you know if you have if you're coming this way yeah. it yeah. says that and then you would kind of do that with most of the signs because yeah. of maybe over at santa fe you know when you start going up the hill you yeah. know it says yeah. you know, coming down the hill it says welcome to the grove going up the hill it well, says two drops that could be welcome yeah. to downtown yeah precisely yeah. so sure. kind of double purpose instead of just having like one sign on the side of the street that says you're you're down here it's Kind of dual purposing, so going one way, so yeah, going this way. Sense. So, where do you think of those signs are going to be? I, where do I think? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, uh, yeah, well, the planning department did not come to a, a definitive decision on that, more the philosophy behind it. So, obviously, I can go back to, to you guys. Where I would vision the grove personally, I would vision the grove uh, right at the uh, right at the end of the water tower place where the, I think spring. 
kind of cuts in, or like a, creates some, what's it called, an iron, uh, iron hand, what is that called? The pan iron, was it? flat iron. Flat iron, yeah. Uh, the, oh, so, yeah, yeah, we're okay. right around there. There's a really there's nice shoe. Yeah. We've been talking to the railway about yeah. doing welcome to the grove and go for Allen Hamill Dad. Yeah. And uh, they have a so, oh, great. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking to that. Yeah, this well. is great. Okay. Yeah, now you're leaving the room. Yeah, well, I would say, well, I think there would be a certain kind of uniformity between the signage, exactly. you know, and the different yeah. players. But sure. Yeah. But other than that, um, it's, yeah, it's also it's a way that well, also slows people down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you do so, surveys, because I've done that around the world when we've done transportation surveys, mm -hmm. that kind of sign is just so slow to go down. So. Is there going to be an opportunity for the uh, neighborhoods to participate in the design and not the uh, gateways? I would assume, yeah. 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 And this could be an error on my, my part. I'm not sure if it, I, I was under the impression that Spring Street is where the where you're going to get access to the levy train. But I was told it was Clark the other day. I heard I'll modify this in the plan to be on Clark Street. Uh, but one of the ideas that comes out in the plan are these ideas. Uh, um, that's what the pink here represents these commercial corridors, and blue represents these uh, residential corridors. And that's kind of just like a design standards almost, and just uh, you have a lot of design standards downtown, you know, for what the streets are going to look like. Um, and part of the discussion that came out of this is that in order to bring that, uh, we want to bring that to other areas in the city for the most part, too. Um, so you have kind of uniform corridors, or at least gives you kind of a sense of place. Not, not wholly uniform, but at least consistency. Yeah, it's a, yeah precise. Um, so, but and one thing that's important to know is. Uh, so a uniform or a, a, a commercial corridor um, is going to be different than a residential corridor. So a lot of the, the current philosophy of the planning department is that a commercial corridor, you don't want to put bikes on the street. You want to have big enough bike paths so they can be completely separate from you know, the 30 and 40 mile an hour traffic. But it doesn't mean you don't want nice trees on the side of the street and trees that, you know, in the median to add to enhance shade and you know beautification. So what we've designated as a commercial corridor, we kind of modified a little bit. Northern is the same, but we wanted to. Uh, we saw Santa Fe over here as an opportunity. You know that it, it's remiss not to acknowledge that as a commercial corridor, even though it's it's, it's not you know fully built up. But it's the one way the city can start taking a little back from the county. For, yeah, because they keep taking all of our all of our revenue. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, property yeah. tax revenue. I mean, they just stayed up the, the the Safeway on the east side. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much did that generate a year in property tax? About 50, 60 grand for the so, schools? I'm not going to discuss that. I'm just saying, I think at that corridor right there, yeah. you need to have a Costco, a Sam's Club, a movie yeah. theater, a condos. It's a high traffic. That corridor. was my idea. And I think the conditioning. My heart sold it to a lot of, I don't want to like break uh, No, no, that's okay. I okay, go on. Yeah, I'm, whatever step. I'm going to keep talking so I can sit Sorry. down again. Uh, so, so that is identifying that, and importantly, especially for the Grove, is and maybe you guys want to discuss this uh, as far as I know that you have some of the worst uh, streets as far as skateboarding, you know, in the whole down. You just look right out there. Right? Yeah, I know I skate on it. It's very difficult. It's kind of like sand. Uh, so, we got to get at least one residential corridor here that kind of leads off Santa Fe. And the difference, oh, sorry, the difference between a residential corridor is actually putting on street bike lanes and slowing the streets down and not, uh, you know, forcing the bikes on the street. And you do want to kind of put those next to high traffic areas so that you know that you don't have to go all the way out of your way to get on a safe street, but you, you know, uh, you know, it's a lot more easy to ride on this street than perhaps northern. So we want to connect that Santa Fe section to the river trail, and this is a great opportunity to take one of the streets in the road and 
make it all nice and put, you know, bike lines on it so that you're just, you know, riding through to get to the, the on the levee trail. Yeah. Uh, and that, so that was a slight modification to that effect you guys plan. Um, and let me see if there's anything else that uh, pertains directly to you. Do they have lighting with a steel uh, mill? Which is a really cool idea. But you great. could also light up the water tower. Yeah. Yeah, Greg was talking about an idea about lighting like lighting the towers in Pueblo. He's already got he's he's already working on that. Yeah, idea. Five and five and six should definitely be in that. Yeah. yeah, we have twenty five. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's that's for the one hundredth commemoration of the flood, June of twenty five. So we're gonna do a preliminary one in the winter. So and, and you guys will have a lot in the, Especially at the end of the survey, there's a comment section, or if you say, hey, number two, this is cool, but you know, we should add this, this, and that. You know, you can build on any one of these ideas. Of, I'm all for it because, you know, this, this is kind of the start of a larger revamping of our neighborhood plans and trying to get them uh, consistent. Um, I think there was one more that was on my mind to affect it here. Uh, No, I think I touched on most of them. I'm going to give it back to Alan. Um, I did identify, and this, this map over here is your existing and a future bike network. Um, I take responsibility for this. Uh, I, I identified B Street, that connection between B Street, uh, as could be a potential uh, access point to get. Because it's so obvious. It's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious that I kind of use it all the time. So, so to, to be, <laughs> Yeah, the two B's, you know, yeah, where yeah. I go on the road. Well, I mean, I go to it all yeah. the time. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I've it's, seen, you know, it's it, if there could be negotiations, you just get a fence along there, you know, we don't want to mess with anyone's property, but right. we do want to get the grove access to downtown. Right. It's redesigned the way to be able to. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all I got, guys. Well, there used to be a bridge on C Street. The yeah. old, the old. I heard that, yeah. Yeah, the old C Street. That's so, Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is there a tree program in Pueblo? Yes. I don't know. Do you know if there's a tree program? I think it's a, probably a question for Parks and Rec. Might be able to speak to that. There are not trees, please. Trees, please. Trees, please. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, that's Gene and Gene. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. We need a robust urban forest. Something like that. No. Yeah. Because yeah. we're doing another grant for Water Tower Place for 400 trees. Around our perimeter. So we're writing that right now. Well, anything you learn from irrigation, spread it, spread that knowledge because I could use that for my house. Doesn't we have six wells, and we're secretly going to use one of them. Okay. Well, does anyone else have any other any questions for us? Eric? Um, where does the, the you were speaking that you're working on getting some brownfield money? Where where does that work into this plan, and then what what sites I guess would it, are you working on now and possibly in the future? Yeah, that's true. The Brownfields grant is is indirectly related to this. Um, the Brownfields grant is another EPA program. Is and, this phase two? Uh, this we're in. Uh, it's it. What it was was Brownfields grant application for the city of Pueblo in the amount of $300,000 to provide for phase one environmental assessments of 18, about 18 sites. Uh, and those, and then and we identified a core area. So the Grove is, I, I think the Grove wasn't necessarily identified as the key area, but it's, we, we were, the, the, we focused downtown as a key area for that. Because we figured if we, we concentrate on downtown redevelopment, That'll spur reinvestment, not only in there but in the adjacent communities. You know, because it's you know it's the whole economy. If you, if you develop our downtown, we get land reused and tax on the tax rolls. That's going to be good for everybody. Is that phase one that's already been received? Uh, the grant. So so the grant talks about a phase one and a phase two. Because I'm talking to Shelly Dunn about phase two is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, and that could be maybe that's a future grant. You know, it is a future grant. Okay. It is available. Right, right. So I just want to be clear. Right. It's a lot of money there. So, so to answer your original question, there is a, it is indirectly related because what happens downtown is going to indirectly impact or benefit the growth. 
Um, and as, as Pueblo gets a good reputation for following through, Pueblo already has a good reputation for Brownfields program. We do some stuff we did in Midtown in the neighborhood near there, the, uh, I think it's called. Uh, Pepper sauce bottoms or something? No, is, is it? Yeah, I think so. Pepper bottoms. Yeah. So that was some successful Brownfields work in the past. And so if we do that downtown, that's gonna, that's gonna be good for us in the future as we concentrate on other neighborhoods as well with other grant applications. So. Well, I, that area between Salt Creek Bridge and the Santa Fe coming together there, the bottom of the hill, it seems like a lot of that would be eligible for that type of money as far as yeah, all of that for re. Yeah, because a lot of industrial. Stuff, that's yeah. all, yeah, straight industrial. It just seems like you wipe that slate clean right. and there's money to do it. You know? It's kind of like free to go within. Yeah. Right. Well, keep in mind, you know, I just think that that area of revitalizing is going to help this area 10 times more than than anything that happened downtown. But good, good, good point. Good point. Good point here. And in Eddie, in many other cities, I mean, this is still the center of downtown. It's yeah. just, <laughs> it hasn't been developed. Well, it's cool. We have yeah. the ability to grow with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thing yeah. For, you know, like Springs or any yeah, other absolutely. places there. And isn't there that sound still not been determined? A lot of that zoning out there hasn't been. That's that undefined area. Mm -hmm. Well, that area, that, yeah. Future, yeah, for the future, future land use. Future yeah. land use, it hasn't been determined. Yet. Indeed, so, right. So just for the people listening, uh, the area near Moffitt, Moffitt Street, yeah, is a special, special redevelopment or special development area, yeah. for future land use purposes. So, if if there's ever like, especially along that. That's uh, Santa Fe, the Santa Fe Drive or Santa, I can't always, I think you know. Santa Fe Drive. Okay, yes. yeah. yeah, so Santa Fe Drive heading out towards the Mesa, um, that when people start redeveloping that, that's gonna probably trigger like a master plan, you know, and we would like to see a master plan for that area where that would guide future, you know, development of that whole area. So that would, that would be good to see that in the future. Well, I got to eight years old, so yeah. I hope that's <laughs> but it, but The truth comes <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions? Um, on the survey, is it li what are the limits on the responses in terms of, is it 160 characters or what is it? No, uh, most of the responses face, uh, put it as, high priority from high priority to this is not going to help okay. um, and then each of those responses gets a point total so then we tally the point total There's based the free form the, at the end at the, the very end, end. that's yeah. what i'm curious the free yeah, form. yeah yeah is that the end? so it is data driven it's quantitative okay in this in the method but there is a lot of open room for comment at the end good okay, that's what i want yeah. there are, what are the limits on that just oh. sky's limit. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. good. Right, you run out of space, <laughs> just email us. And then I have a question to Alan and, and Brian yeah, for on that commenting piece. Um, yeah. So what does it look like too when with incorporating those comments and that free form into the plan? Because I don't know if that warrants a an appendix type of section that talks that about is the plan that we are going to have the data from the uh survey results as an appendix to the plan okay and we can talk about it in the staff report to the planning and zoning commission we can acknowledge you know we can summarize comments we can kind of summarize trends of comments and we'll, that'll definitely be in the background papers for this planning and zoning commission okay thank you <laughs> yeah, but, I have one more comment. sure okay, I really like the new trails that you guys got going. Mm -hmm. Super, super nice. That trail on the levee is going to be excellent. Mm -hmm. you know, way to get to downtown. Yeah. Well, I'm complaining. I live downtown, so I'm complaining that, that I can't even get to that trail. <laughs> <I> gotta... <laughs> that's, that's but you guys got to go and ask this little yeah. So, you know the status? You know, we, as talking to Jeff and other people in the neighborhood, we're still have an interest in exploring the sculpture park idea. Right. And I did call uh, Steve Myers, and I haven't been able to get him to call me back. And uh, since you guys are kind of leading the, the effort on behalf of the city, if you could just approach him on behalf of the uh, 
Next time I, I'll, I'll ask our director Scott to next time he sees our director Stephen to just be yeah. like, hey, please yeah, just, talk to the Grove about that sculpture part. Yeah. We just want to see if it's a possibility. Yeah, yeah, kind of get it on the radar. Yeah. Yeah. Who owns that property now? Because yeah. Yeah. So it's Are there examples of people who have punctured the covenant to see how far you can do like a sculpture park? Are there other examples oh, for the, for the, where you, because you can only go down so far and then right. you're restricted? We, we have, we've been talking, we don't think we need to, uh, we don't think we have to disturb. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's a ground level and below, it's not up on the mound. It's, it's right, the, but any time you, you can only break the surface of any of those. I don't, I don't think we really need to do that. That would be awesome because that's the, usually the problem. Yeah, just kind of fast. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because that's where it's pretty straightforward. Like mono down, like foundation. You violate the covenant. Yeah, and I think that that's probably easier than this. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because it's hard place. Yeah. And cool. You know, it has a lot of attractiveness as far as for the whole city, not just for the super fun site. And it kind of Blends into the art one deal too. Right. Plus, at Water Tower Place, we are actually talking about relinquishing that spur to be a pedestrian walkway like the High Line in New York. So that would connect this to Sculpture Park right to Water Tower Place. Yeah, so we're just, we've already done the preliminary designs for that. Yeah, so that would be a really nice part of Because we need another access point. Because our entrance to Water Tower Place will be here on D Street, but we're not out in the front. So that would be our only pedestrian entrance to that would be cool because you know by the time running lights gets developed and right it's all exactly. so nice very hard work. Yeah. I'm pushing for that because we're not putting mail cards on the other side. Of the <laughs> Jeff, uh, so there's a supposedly a walk-in bike bridge that supposedly the contract's been let. Do you know anything about that? Oh, that's it's be by Main Street. That's the Ar is that the Arkansas River or Arkansas River Trailway Project? I think they're building a bridge. bridge. Yeah. So it connects yeah. the two sides of the levee. Right. Yeah. Do you know the staffs? Uh it's it's got funding, so that's a lot farther than a lot of projects. Uh so I would I'd so, expect that soon. Yeah. yeah, because I I think our colleague Barrett, who's the uh planner uh responsible for that, um uh, has been talking with I think doing the either the RFP for bidding out to a contractor or they had since selected a contractor and they're just working out the contract. Yeah, that's right. She was trying to, because they're type of bridge suspension. Yeah. Or, I bet so. They're in the design right now. Right. So awesome. it's the design for yeah, that's, that's a big deal. I mean, it just yeah. connects and you get this nice loop going on the whole side. Of yeah. Right. Except no access to downtown. Sorry. I'm allowed now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like a full complete network of uh, connectivity. What about the tunnel under the depot to it? Then you can connect. That's what I was saying to it's begin in with. It's the plan. Uh, there's, a, there's a pedestrian promenade that goes under the tracks that you go in the depot and takes you up to the levee, and then you can connect to the two bridges at before Fourth Street and the one here between Central, you know, between Maine and Montana. Really? Because uh, I said that, but it's I, in the drawings. I never even saw it in the drawings. So it's in the drawings. If you look at it, there's a dotted line. I thought there was one that came directly down from the Union, from the Union Avenue bridge. That went well, that's there. there too, but this one actually goes right underneath the tracks. Huh. So there's a central one for levy access too. Just like I said. All right, go yeah, scary. It makes sense. sense. It's, it's short enough, 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 so you don't have to go through all those sections. Yeah, it's short. It's short enough. Oh, you can see the light at the end. Oh, yeah. Because we're doing that wire fair place. We've got two tunnels that connect to the river line to get your car. Oh, okay. So we got this, we have the same issue because as soon as you, or I reached out to James Terrell and two other light artists to see if we can do a light installation. Oh, that's so, smart. That's really yeah. smart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, James Terrell. James Terrell. Well, he's good. <laughs> do you guys got any more questions <laughs> about this, the CSRP? Yeah. No. Do you have any more shelves? Uh, just, just to, just to reiterate, just um, definitely. Uh, most importantly, the most effective things you can do is fill out that survey. And um, I'm, I'm going to reiterate what I've heard to the Grove group, just to kind of reiterate what I've heard as far as what you've been discussing. But if you know any, any further ideas, you're always welcome to email it, or give it, and also spread the word. Very important, just like Bart said, word of mouth. Okay. Talk about this thing as much as possible because we need comment by July 22nd. 
That's so when I'm the also, window closes for this comment. I have probably 400 postcards through Nextdoor because I'm one of the mediators. So I have free direct to mailbox postcards. So I can put the survey link and everything on that. And it'll go directly to their mailboxes. I think that'd be a good idea. I can do that easily. Well, well yeah, and maybe if you want, uh, because we definitely I can are. I do the door handles too. Right. Free. I'll do them for free for Because maybe we'll coordinate on that because the health for mailing over 3,000 postcards to every single address in Bessemer, Eilers, slash, and the Grove. And um, I've never got to one, and I live in one. Well, no, they haven't been sent. It hasn't been sent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, Lexi, do you know when those postcards might be mailed out approximately? We are hoping to get those sent out next week. But I can, so, I can hold off if we needed to, but. No, no, go ahead and send them. Because what, yeah, what I'm thinking is maybe what we can do. See, great, great. Yeah. So the health department is going to mail those postcards next week. So like in a week, so, so 10 days from now, right. people are going to get these postcards. Like, what, right. what is this about? Right. And half of them are going to be like, well, whatever. But, so then I like two weeks later, you follow up. I can follow up some. Yeah. So I can do the free door hangers. Yeah. Or I can do the postcards. Yeah. And those are free through next door. Right on. And hit and hit this neighborhood because this this neighborhood. Yeah, 228 addresses. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What about this neighborhood? Hit it. Hit it with some outreach. Oh yeah. 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 yeah we'll get yeah. better voice the more we get. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Sure. No, we get sure. people, people just this neighborhood, you know. I know. But but that's the thing is is that you're gonna wear them down. You know, I think they'll they'll see that you're trying to include them, and you you want to keep them engaged and. It's got to create results, and it's going to be good for the association, you know, for the neighborhood as a whole to kind of come together. Oh, free starter. Let's do something. Yeah. If we could, they got in maybe an invite to this meeting next month. Sure, we can easily do that. I can easily do that. Just let me know. Yeah, 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 yeah,
you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, does your phone hurt? Does your phone get locked up? No, that's next door. That's someone here lives in the road. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. So, um, so just to reiterate, focus on the quick wins. Focus on the things that are achievable. Focus on the things that, um, and then three to five years from now, revisit it and re- amend the plan. You know, and work with the city on amending it because then you've got some things accomplished, and then you uh, take in the new ideas. You know, oh, that, that chair is coming, coming down. There you go. Good. That's a save. Good save. Yeah. Cool. So, no, and the other thing. Yeah. Did you actually see that? <laughs> I think she saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the first time. Either. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get you a different chair. <laughs> But, but the other okay. thing you want to emphasize, I know, right? Another thing to emphasize is that uh, very, this is very, very important. Uh, when, you're, when you're continuing to implement these things and you're advocating for these things, and also when you're getting new ideas, always, always, always think, who, who is the end user in mind? Who is going to be utilizing these things? Not just you, but who in your community is truly going to be using this? And you have to you have to separate yourself. It's easy to like fall in love with an idea because you think it's a great idea, and 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 you might enjoy this idea, but then it might kind of fade away, and not many other people might be into it. So you got to always keep in mind that. The, the greatest good will come when you achieve things that will have the greatest impact in your community. So always please keep that in mind. Because that's what's gonna bring the that's what it's gonna bring the enjoyment from your community. And that's also gonna bring the dollars as well. Make sense? Yeah. yeah we have to be humble in that way. Right? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'd like to wrap our section up. Do you guys have anything else for us? I don't think so. No, not, not for this meeting. No, I think it's great. It's come a long way since we had those first yeah. visioning meetings and all that kind of stuff. And, and I would definitely, I guess, put a pitch out. Brought us in, so you guys have brought us into the Grove is now part of this. Before yeah. it was pretty much not included in any plan in the city. Yeah. Moment. Correct. Yeah, so the now, super fun thing got kind of looped it all together. Mm-hmm. So now we have a unified plan, so it's good. Yeah. The only thing I would love to see is the historical survey that started years ago. I know we've already talked about yeah. this to really push back because that gives us a lot. So you'll be seeing a little bit of that pretty soon. And Lexi, you had a comment as well? I was just going to say, too, for the next steps for this plan is, like they said, after they get all this information and data, they'll there'll essentially be like a final uh, an amendable final that is then presented to the Planning and Zoning yeah. Commission and then the City Council. And I think that that would be a really great opportunity for this group, GAP, to be mm-hmm. represented well, as, as well as just show the support for the plan when the time comes. So I'll make sure to stay in touch. Well, I, I mean, Jeff and Paul are always super in touch, so they'll make sure to let you guys know when those times are. And if you can make it to those meetings, that would be really cool. I agree 100 percent, Lexi. Thank you, Lexi. And that goes for anyone else listening, anyone who learns about this place thing now and then, they can always engage because there's always gonna be there's gonna be an opportunity for public comment during the Planning and Zoning Commission too. But definitely we want to see as much comment by July 22nd as much as possible. Great. Sure. Thanks so much for welcoming us. All right. I'm gonna Lexi, I'm gonna go ahead and end the call, okay? Okay. Hey bye guys.